Hey fam, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about Kyrie and Terra, or KNT as I'm going to call it. And this is a project that sponsored one of my videos a few months back if you saw that on the channel. And since then I ended up buying one of their NFTs and I kept talking with the team. So in the end they asked me to come on as an advisor for the project. And I agreed and I'm helping them with some of the tokenomics as well as some of the perspectives from a guild, from a manager side of things so that they can integrate some of these strengths and weaknesses from the other NFT games that we've seen into their game as well. So I'm doing that and of course for this I do have a small allocation of their advisor tokens. So keep that in mind as you watch this. I have a invested interest in the project. Obviously I'm biased. But it's something that I think is cool, especially if you like anime, especially if you like the otaku culture that I do, then you might find this project interesting as well. They just came up with the first rendition of their battle footage. This is the in-game footage that they've exported to kind of give a demonstration of how it's going to work and look. And I thought it was really cool, so I figured let's bring it on the channel and maybe some of you guys would be interested in this as well. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. So we can pop over to the website and I'll tell you one of the things I like about KNT is it's based around the anime, comic, and game culture of Japan, right? I told you I'm a big otaku, I'm a big anime nerd if you can't tell from the decorations behind me. And basically it's a niche that I haven't seen many NFT games go into. Now there are a few, right, of course, but I haven't seen that many and I do think it's a niche that's underexplored so far. This is a gotcha game, right, which is the highest grossing, highest revenue grossing game genre in Japan, right? Many of you will be familiar with gotcha games. So they're going for play to earn, but I do see ways this could incentivize people to spend real money without only trying to extract value, right? So as long as the game is fun, I do see ways for the economy to become sustainable in the long run. It's based around a visual novel, which is something that's unique and very cool. And they have a lot of ways to take their IP and turn this into other revenue generating streams. One of their goals is to have their own manga and anime down the line, as well as sell merchandise. So very ambitious goals, but there's something that I think would be really cool and reasons I see for more sustainability in this project than some of the other NFT games we're looking at. Now, of course, cons, one thing you'll notice right away if you come to the website is they don't have a team section, right? They mention the team a little bit in the white paper, but not enough. They've doxed themselves to me. I had them do that before I sponsored their first video, just so I felt more comfortable with it. And they are going to tell you as the community more about themselves as the project develops, but it's definitely one of the things that you'll see as a red flag when you start to research the project. And it's the reason they will be eventually doxing more of themselves in the future. But right now you just have to be in the dark a little bit and see how you feel about that when you invest in this project. Everyone has to make their own decisions. Now, I do think the space is also getting more competitive, even though I haven't seen too many games with this particular niche, the NFT game space is exploding and there's lots of big competitors out there, right? So we have to be more picky with what games we invest in. And another thing about KNT is it's one of the NFTs where the game isn't out yet. So it will tie up a bit of your liquidity, right? If you spend a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars on some of the NFTs, They've done one sale, there's two more sales coming up. I'm not gonna talk about them too much in this video, but you can ask more questions in the Discord if you wanna know those details. And basically, it's one of the things that will tie up some of your liquidity while you wait for them to develop their IP for you to develop this game, right? And anyways, you can come here to the website and get some more details. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna jump into the white paper here really quick and we'll talk about a couple of the game mechanics and then I'll show you the battle footage that they came out with. So if we look at the white paper here, and you can grab this from the website, like I mentioned, these are the Celestia, right? These are the main NFT of the game, and they all come with a few attributes. So they have a class and an element, which work in the function of strength and weaknesses, like we saw in the old version of Axie Infinity, like you're used to in Pokemon, right? Fire is good against leaf, leaf is good against water, etc. So they have these kind of mechanics. And then each card also has stats, right? And your Celestia's level can be upgraded and the equipment and stuff we're gonna to attach to them can be upgraded. There's a lot of mechanics there for burning and sinking tokens, which I think is important, and a lot of ways to strive and grow and kind of give you the satisfaction of leveling up your characters and getting stronger as you play the game, right? So those mechanics are there, and we might have to do a separate video about that because it gets kind of complicated. Right now, we're just gonna talk more about the game mechanics themselves. So these things are there, keep them in mind. And Celestias will come with unique skills, but then they can also be equipped with action cards. And action cards will give the Celestia 
more skills and you can swap these action cards out before you get into battles based on certain situations which will allow you to mix up your strategy and come up with different ways of playing a certain level or competing against other players right so and once again these action cards can be upgraded and improved upon in in different ways that make it very strategic right so we'll talk more about that later and then basically it's a dice casting game is the core mechanic behind it so you roll a dice at the start of your turn and that kind of predicts what moves you will be able to use based on your Celestia skills and based on the equipment and the action cards you have attached to them, right? And here you see an example of a fireball and you can see if you roll a one, two, or five, then you would be able to use this and it's got a certain amount of magic attack and speed which interacts with your Celestia's statistics, right? So there's some more details on what the stats are and what they do in the white paper if you wanna come see this. And then there's more detail on the equipment which is used to increase your stats as well. We're gonna look at this battle footage in a sec and you kinda of need to understand that there's five phases to the battle and the names have changed a little bit in the battle footage itself. So the team is updating the white paper now to reflect the same names, but it's essentially the same principle. So you have this first phase, right? Some Celestias have their own unique ability, kind of like if you've ever played Pokemon and you send out a Pokemon with Intimidate, it lowers your opponent's attack in the beginning of the match or the beginning of the round. So there's lots of abilities like that and we'll see some of them activate in the footage. And then you have the dice casting phase where you're gonna roll your dice, which will determine what moves you can use. And then you have phase three where you're gonna select your targets, right? There are some moves that are area of effect, which will hit everyone. And then there's certain moves that will be priority and certain moves that will attack only single targets. So you can select which targets your moves will hit. And then there's the execution phase, right? You watch all the game footage of these moves being executed of them using the attacks on the target that they chose and your opponent attacking you. And then there's an end turn phase, which will also activate certain abilities that only trigger at the end of the game rather than the beginning. And that's kind of how the five stages work. So let's watch this battle footage and you'll kind of have a better idea of what I'm talking about. Now I'm moving my head out of the way. And then you can see in the first phase here, the abilities that get activated. Regina, who is the founder edition that was sold, just used her shield. And then the boss, Noxia, just used an area of effect that damaged everybody. You can see we got the dice roll, it was a three. And now you go through the moves and select which ones you want to use on what targets. This is all in-game footage. It was pulled out of Unity, so this wasn't created for the purpose of being a trailer. This is actual game footage. Another little cool thing about this is the music is original, so the music was created just for KNT, just like the art is all original, the art was all created just for KNT. So some of the little sound effects are samples, right, of course, but most of this content was all created specifically for the purpose of KNT, and they're not just buying sample packs and using art that was produced for something else and using music that was produced for something else. So all of that I really like. Then we get to the end phase here and you can see boss Noxia is healing herself, which is one of those end phase abilities that I talked about, right? Once again, start of the phase, we're gonna see the abilities get activated. And then this turn, we're gonna actually see Lon Ho use her unique ability, right? Which is an area effect. I think it's the strongest area effect in the game. So you'll see that in the execution phase here once we've gone through and selected the targets. Here we go, we're using one of Regina's ability that heals herself. So you can see there we selected our own side as the target selection too. And this is where I said some areas do need to be improved a little bit, right? There needs to be a bit more clarification and ease of selecting targets and stuff. So this is the first rendition of the battle footage, but you can see it's looking really cool so far. This turn they rolled a four, of course. And once again, here we go, we're gonna start the battle phase. And Shang Mei actually also has a special ability that's a single physical attack, which is pretty cool here as well. That's the Lon Hao special attack, the unique skill I talked about. That's the huge area effect, the strongest one. Yeah, the animation for the unique skills is really cool too. When you see them use the unique skills, they're, they're pretty awesome. They put a lot of thought into like each of these when it's a special ability, right?
there's the end of the turn battle as well. And then this turn, we're also going to see some more unique abilities. You're going to see that both Boss Noxia and Regina here have a nether special ability. So Boss Noxia is going to give everyone an attack buff down, right? Because there are stat buffs in this game. And this is a debuff. And then we're going to see Regina's unique skill to heal the party members a lot. And it's going to remove the debuff. You'll see the debuff at the bottom of the screen below the each character in a minute here. And to me, this plays like, I like the dice roll because it kind of plays like a virtual board game. And I love board games. I love video games. So it's kind of unique, right? Obviously, this is first draft. So there's going to be some changes, but a lot of thought has gone into the damage calculations and stuff. So from the team, this is going to be pretty close to the final values. They're still working on them. They're still working on a few buffs and nerfs as they continue, but should be interesting. Here's that healing ability. You can see the debuffs are about to disappear from each of the character. And then that gives you a drastic amount of healing as well, which is one of the reasons. Regina, pretty cool. The Founder's Edition, I'm glad I picked that up. And all these abilities and the moves you can use are really affected by the cards you're equipping, by the action cards. So you can see how the strategy would change. If you couldn't be, if you were unable to beat Box Noxia, then you might want to come in and try a different strategy, try different action cards and that kind of thing. That's the first rendition of their battle footage. Obviously, it only gets better from here. I'm interested in the project, which is why I invested. So if you guys are interested too, I will be bringing more videos to the channel from time to time. But that's it for now. If you guys want to join their Discord, I'll put a link down in the description too. You can go ask any questions you want. And like I mentioned, there will be some more NFT sales coming up. They've already done one so far, so you can find those details too. And ask me any questions down below in the comments you want. And hit that like, subscribe button if you like this. I'll see you very soon with another video. Thank you all for watching.